if you use a smaller pupil, okay, if you use a smaller pupil, then you can see that the accommodation leak increased. Okay? So does the accommodation lag. So both increase when you are uh, switching to uh, like a small pupil. Okay, so the pupil definitely will affect the, the tonic accommodation as well. Okay, so you can see that the the, the point of intersection also change. And uh, and uh, the other things that you may anticipate is that because when you have a, uh, when you have a smaller pupil size, so usually the amount of light that can reach the retina is reduced. Okay, so you can see that here is 2 mm, it is 0.5 mm. So in terms of the uh, diameter or the radius increased by about four times, okay, the area would be, so will be increased by 16 times. Okay, so therefore you would expect if you have this pupil size, so the amount of lights that can reach the retina will be 16 times more uh, than this one. So with uh, less light being able to reach the retina, of course, you might not be able to see a very clear image. And that's why it will also increase your accommodation leak as well. So the, the change in the accommodation, of course, will is result in an increase in myopia. So for example, if you have an increase my uh, accommodation lead, of course, at distance, then you have, will have experience a myopic shift. Remember, uh, at distance, when you're looking at an, uh, distant objects, and yet you still accommodate, so this will cause an increase in myopia. The myopic shift can be induced by many different conditions. One condition is uh, what we discussed before in a dark room okay so when you're in a dark room where you can hardly see the objects so the pupil will be dilated and the uh, spherical aberrations will increase and this may trigger the accommodation uh, the myopic shift second even under dim light condition <laughs> uh, we will have a similar situation scenario that um, uh, the the uh, the pupil will be dilated under the dim light environment as well and, and that's why causing the myopic shift. Absence of stimulus. Absence of stimulus, for example, when you are looking at the sky, okay, uh, 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 when you're looking at skies without any target, then uh, just like when you're looking at something like a blank field, so, uh, and that will also trigger the uh, um, myopic shift as well, accommodation. Okay, so these are uh, uh, some of the possible conditions that will cause a myopic shift. And the last one is, is of course, when you use some optical device, okay? Uh, the optical device could be, for example, when you're in high school, so you may also use, um, for example, a microscope, or if you have a chance to use the binocular or telescope, okay? So when you need to put something very close in front of the eye, so that will trigger accommodation. If you still remember the the, the slides that we just talked about before the, the, the break, because the, the um, the awareness of proximity. So when you have something really uh, positioned very close to the eye, it will trigger the accommodation and myopic shift. So uh, when the accommodation adopts the mini in intermediate position because of the reduce in luminance, uh, this could be due to uh, under the situation of that uh, dim environment or even the, in a dark room, we call this a dark field or a night myopia. So that means this myopia will only experience at night. Okay. Some of the typical example is uh, when people, they need to drive a car at night. So sometimes they will find that their prescription is not entirely correct for uh, their distant vision. Okay. So this is due to the reduce in aluminum. If this is related to the lack of details, target details, such as the, the, uh, the condition three here, when you're looking at a light spot or when you're looking at the sky or uh, something doesn't produce a very clear uh, accommodation uh, stimulus to to you, we call this an empty space accommodation or empty space myopia. Okay, and if this is related to the use of optical device or optical instrument, we call this a uh, instrument myopia. Okay, so it's related to the use of the optical instrument. It's called the instrument myopia. And uh, and uh, in your um, I think in your anatomy, maybe you also come across these few terms. So we have different uh, luminance levels, okay? We have the, like a photopic condition. Uh, for example, I think today is, is a photopic condition. So for anything, this is a light level. For anything larger than 10 candela per meter square, it will uh, consider as photopic condition. 
mesopic condition is somewhere in the middle. So this is like a very, uh, it's quite dim, okay. Um, uh, I think uh, you will start to learn the uh, the clinical optometry one later on. I think uh, you might not um, be able to uh, know how dim it could be here, but for some of the procedures later on, you will you will know that for some of the procedures we have to conduct it under the mesopic condition. Okay, so usually this refer to a very like a quite dim environment. Okay, uh, for example, when you're doing my uh, retinoscopy, so you you probably have to do it in a dim environment. Okay, that's mesopic condition. For scotopic is like a almost like a, a dark condition. Okay, so it's scotopic. Anything smaller than ten to uh, minus three candelium per meter square will be regarded as scotopic condition. The the uh, luminance level will also affect the accommodation response. Okay, and therefore uh, we we try to uh, plot this graph and uh, show you. Uh, the first one is photopic condition. So this is under the normal experimental condition. Okay, uh, all the experiments are usually conducted under this photopic condition. Uh, when you are in a when you are in an examination room, eye examination room, usually will be in a photopic condition. In terms of the uh, lux, lux is another unit where we can measure the light level. Uh, the photopic condition means that uh, we will have a, a room lighting of about three hundred to five hundred lux. This is considered as photopic. Mesopic is uh, under the dim light environment. And as you can see here, if you're under a dim light environment, the uh, accommodation leak increase and the accommodation lag will also be increased as well. Okay, Because under a dim light environment, so the, the, the eye cannot see very clear and that's why it will trigger accommodation even when they are looking at the uh, even when they're looking at distant objects. So the accommodation lack, uh, the lead increase, okay, with mesopic condition. And the scotopic condition, of course, for the scotopic condition will be even more. As you can see here from this graph, if you are moving from photopic to mesopic, you can see that this graph, uh, this line, uh, this position, the line position uh, lower here and increase on this side. And you, you expect if you further reduce the light level to scotopic, so this line will be even closer to, to the resting state of uh, accommodation. Okay. And presumably, if you're under the scotopic condition without lighting, uh, you can't basically see the stimulus, and that's why your uh, response should more or less be the same, uh, regardless of whether you are presenting a distant on the target. So that means if you reduce the lighting, presumably this line should be closer to, to, the, to the black lines. So the light myopia, so it, is, it is more clinically relevant because um, some patients will come in and, 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 and uh, complain about their, their their vision at night. Uh, this could occur in uh, any situation. I mean, with patients with different amounts of um, refractive error, and usually it's caused by the spherical aberration increase, okay, because of the dilated pupil at night. Sign symptom, okay. Um, I don't know if you know the difference between sign and symptom. Symptom is something that the patient experience. For example, headache, okay, is, is a symptom, okay. Symptom. Psi is uh, the clinical findings, so something that you can you can observe or you can realize uh, during your eye examination. So this is usually is from what the patient experienced, and this is your objective findings. Okay, it's called psi and symptom. So we, this is the abbreviation. So uh, for psi and symptom, so the patients may uh, complain about problem uh, seeing at night, uh, particularly when they drive, because they have to look at the, for example, the the car plate number, the sign, uh, uh, different sign. So that's why they say they, they may experience some problems sometimes. In terms of their best corrected vision or visual acuity, so the distant visual acuity will be reduced under the dim light environment. And this is caused by the myopic shift actually. So the, 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 amounts of, the amounts of myopia increase at night. Okay? And if you measure the uh, refractive error under the dim light condition, you will see an increase in myopia and usually in the range of 0.5 to 1 diopter, uh, depending on different individual. So uh, for uh, this kind of patient, uh, if they really have suffering from the myopic shift at night when driving, so what we can do is to prescribe a new pair of spectacle with, with, the, with that increase being incorporated into your spectacle. So that, meaning that you have to like uh, overcorrect the patient okay, uh, when they need to drive a car at night. That may help to improve the visual acuity. Okay, so instrument myopia. 
So this is usually is a is a temporary increase. Okay, it's not like a, a sustain or so it's a very transient increase in accommodation induced by uh, looking uh, through the optical instrument, as I mentioned before, like microscope, telescope, binocular, um, different kinds of optical device. Uh, one of the uh, the main main uh, trigger or the stimulus for instrument myopia is because they they need to be very close to the eye for the first thing. The second thing is usually this instrument they uh, they also have uh, a light source and they also have like an aperture. Uh, for example, in the 